Because that's stop rocking back and forth, huh? <laughs> like, what's wrong with him? He got the autism. <laughs> you know what else is always the the AIDS, the pneumonia, the autism, the croup. I believe we are on live. Thank you, Brother Richard, for sitting down once again for Behind the Final Call cover story. Mm -hmm. A late edition of the show, but hey, we always got to make it happen. We got to do what That's we right. got to do. The date on this paper is December 24, 2019. Volume number 39, number 11. Title of the paper is Trump, Politics and Impeachment. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Richard. Wa alaikum salam, sir. Why this cover story? Well, you know, this is one of the, uh, one of the, probably one of the most interesting and important events that's happened in 2019. Um, we know that as of today, which is what, December 18th, as of today, they were doing the official vote on wh whether Mr. Trump would be impeached, what is, which is essentially means that the House of Representatives would be charging him with two crimes, and then he would be moving, then the next phase would be moving into the Senate where a trial would be taken. Uh, Mr. Trump is only the fourth president in US, his, in U.S. history to face impeachment, and it looks like he will, he will be only the third to ever have been impeached, right? Um, but I think what we wanted to look at, and what we look at in his paper is not just him, but this division in the country. As of December 16th, about 45 or 46% of the people were for the president's impeachment and removal, and 48, about 48% 48 were, were against. This shows a very divided elect, a very divided public. We know that the election was close and it was divided. We know that Trump has a, uh, a base that will not desert him seemingly for anything, and Apparently, as uh, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said at one point, there's also some hidden Trump supporters out there. Uh, and so there's a fear even that this impeachment action may actually make him more powerful, make him him, which I think is kind of strange, because if a man is that unpopular, how can people have sympathy? But I think that says there's a lot that Mr. Trump embodies in terms of white uh, self-image and the belief that white is right and this is their time and that whites are agreed and they've had enough. So check out our paper this week. It's by Brother Askia Muhammad and Sister Starla Muhammad contributed to the piece. I think it's a very good piece in terms of looking at this schism in the country and what it could mean. And it's pretty ugly. So we need to stay tuned. It's probably only go going to get uglier once they go to the Senate. So even though, of course, this paper came out today, mm -hmm. and there were, there was hearings that occurred today. So today, can you, is, today is Tuesday. Wednesday. Is when it came out yesterday. I mean, yeah, came out yesterday. yesterday but yeah. there, there's there's stuff that's happening today. Can, even Absolutely. though it's not in the paper yet, can you give us what what went on? Well, today, what went to, on today, today essentially you have members of the House. Um, they may still be speaking now because it's about, what, 6 o'clock here in Chicago? 5.30? 5. 5, uh, five o'clock. They may be still going. But essentially, you have members of the House making their arguments either for or against the impeachment of the president. And what I think is that people should pay attention to the language, right? Because on both sides, the president is being accused of being an enemy of democracy and an enemy of the people. And the Democrats who are accusing the president are also being called uh, the enemy of the people and crooks. So there's no middle ground. There's a lot of passion. There's a lot of ugly words, words like treason and traitor. You know, so the, these are pretty significant words. And I think, you know, it would, if you get a chance, go back and listen to what some of these congressmen are saying. They're saying, like the Republicans are saying, you're trying to nullify the election. You hate the president. Um, you've always hated him. You've been trying to impeach him for three years. Um, you don't like the people in my district. You don't like us. You don't like our way of life. You don't like that we believe in Jesus. I mean, all kinds of stuff. 
this being said, you don't like the fact that we believe in and we're pro-life. So, I mean, it's all kinds of, of things that are being said, you know, that um, you need to just listen to the language. And then they're calling the president a threat to American democracy, a threat to the Constitution. Uh, on the other side, the Democrats are calling him a crook, of course. So all of these things are, are very important, but the language and the way that both sides are being painted, there's no middle ground. You can check out my editorial where, where I talk about this. There's no middle ground. There's no national interest. There are just these competing factions, which, believe it or not, the Founding Fathers warned against because they had seen civil wars in England. So they warned against a, pre a predominance of parties and party loyalty over loyalty to country. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad's uh, article this week, again, you got to read it in light of what's, what's literally happening today. World confusion and revolution. You have to read his piece this week because he outlines what is happening to America right now. You know, so we, we got to, uh, I mean, really check this out, man. I mean, it's right on time. It's right on time. You know, it talks about how America has been able to go around the world destroying people. But now she's facing destruction. Um, and that part of what is happening to her in terms of divine chastisement is white person against white person. Just like she pitted blacks against blacks. The yellow man against the yellow man, the red man against the, the red man. Now, a law is moving in such a way that it's the whites against the whites. So this article, man, is really incredible. Um, lastly, I'd say the, the, the question is also, what should we be doing at a time like this? Right. right? So ultimately, we say that this is the end of the world of the Caucasian people and their dominance. And if you look, you can see it. And I talk about that in, in my editorial. What we should be doing is getting ourselves together. Certainly what we should be doing is heeding the advice and guidance and words of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan because the white man at this point cannot even save himself. So if he can't save himself, he certainly can't save us. But I would say he doesn't even have an interest in saving us. So our commitment to save But it's one we feel is worth watching. And the ministers. Great article. Um, great, great information that we need to be aware of and we need to be studying and, and taking a look at. Thank you, Brother Richard. It looks like we had a sound problem, but it hopefully a lot willing is back up. I, I, I know, I know, I know. Um, so. Yeah, somebody sent me a text. I believe you all should be able to hear me now. There's probably a little extra background sound because I had to snatch the mic. So apologize for that. You said a little bit better. Let me make this quick adjustment. They could hear us in the beginning, Brother Rich. So don't give me that that look. They um. So let's let's boost that up a little bit. <laughs> Okay. All right. 
They can hear me now. Praise you to a lot. Okay, so we need a sound engineer. Anyway, go ahead. It, we, we, we do. And, and for those who would like to help make this show more better, y'all wouldn't believe what's happening. You, you can see me going down and can, trying to control stuff on my phone and all of this. So, so we, we can use help. And, and, and we're not opposed to anybody who would be interested in volunteering to help us make this show more better. Um, but want to jump. You talked about the article dealing with reparations, mm -hmm. but I want to jump to the back cover of the paper real quick mm -hmm. and let you all know that if you're interested in what we're talking about, especially as it relates to reparations, but even more so with what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has given us as the best and only solution, which is separation. You don't want to miss Savior's Day 2020. Um, there's a lot of events. I'm not sure what I'm authorized to talk about yet. But of course, Student Minister Ava has been traveling around with these town hall meetings, so we could expect to hear something about that. And of course, we know this is a big anniversary of the Nation of Islam, the 90th year, but also the Final Call newspaper. So we're not going to give you no details right now, but you know, be on the lookout and expect to hear more information. Well, we, we definitely want folks to be ready for the Final Call 40th anniversary banquet. Of course, 2019 is uh, 40th year technically, but we wanted to do it in a big way. So what better way to celebrate 40 years than a Savior's Day 2020 in Detroit? So you can go to um, NOI.org right now, get information, get your tickets, and um, keep your eyes peeled. We may have some stuff we want you to do. We may want to hear from you in terms of what the final call has meant for you over 40 years. Yes, I mean, sir. And I know there are some incredible stories out there. So, you know, we got some stuff we need to do. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, hey, make sure you, you stay on top of that. Get your hotel rooms. Don't wait till the last minute. You know, sometimes we do that. Uh, and even though we don't necessarily celebrate Christmas in the way that many of our community and family, this will make a beautiful Christmas day gift to give somebody a trip to save this day. Yeah, I, I mean, I think, brother, again, and I say this pretty much every year, I think that every black person in America, regardless of their religious persuasion or their political orientation, should attend the Nation of Islam Savior's Day. Thousands of people, no fighting. When I say no fighting, guess what I mean? No fight. No fight. Not one. No arguments. Barely a disagreement. Um, a lot of love. I got a lot of welcoming. I mean, you know, you will you will feel at home. You know, I, I promise you. And it is an example of what we can do when we start to understand who we are, and we're to ourselves. Yes, and we don't have to be in the midst of an enemy. So for me, Savior's Day is always an example of what black people could, should, and, and must do. So I mean, it's, it's, you got a huge vending area and, and, and products from black folk. You got families, you got children, you got elders. Um, and you don't have to be a Muslim to come. Just, just you know, black. I mean, you know, if, even if you're not black. You know, you might want to come and, and check out the minister's lecture as well because there's a need for this message and this training literally around the world and throughout different aspects of American society because we're seeing a society that is less and less spiritually focused. We're seeing a society that is really coming apart more and more at the seams. Uh, there was even, um, I think we got a piece in this week about how fewer and few, fewer people are going to church or see themselves as religious, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but the bad thing is when you don't have any spiritual values, when you don't have anything that you cling to that guides your moral compass and inspires you to try to live a better life. So um, Savior's Day is a place where you can see all of the best in black folk. Ain't no need for no extra police. Matter of fact, I always say, if you're a police officer, you want to work Savior's Day. Because you're going to basically, all you're going to do is sit around and drink coffee all day. And if there's a problem, we will address it ourselves. Uh, with self-policing, we have the uh, Nation of Islam Ministry of Health there to assist with any health emergency that happens. Then, of course, we call the outside medical uh, professionals as needed. But, I mean, it's a, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. And that's February the 21st to the through the 23rd in Detroit at the TCF Center, go to NOI.org. Uh, but I mean, like you said, 90 years, 2020 will mark 90 years since the advent. 
of the great Mahdi, Master Farad Muhammad, in uh, North America. I think it marks the 44th year of the minister working in the absence of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the 90th year for this great movement um, in this country. So, very, very historic, man. Come on out. I guarantee you, you will enjoy yourself. You really will. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I um, want to jump to the article, Once Thriving Black Community Becomes Redevelopment Target. Um, can you give us a little bit about... This is, again, that? one of the... This is out of Richmond, Virginia, and it's one of the things that we often see, where a, a black community was up, then is down, or having problems, then all of a sudden new people want to come in and take it over. So now we're looking at that in... in um, in, in the city of Richmond. So come on, I mean, so check out the paper, read about it, um, and see what you see in your city. Are you seeing the same same type of activity? Because we know that, that, that gentrification is a problem all across the country. Um, as a matter of fact, here in Chicago, where the Obama Center uh, will be built, there are plans that, 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 that people feel will negatively imp impact black folks that have lived on the south side and then South Shore, Woodlawn, Kenwood, these communities right there for the longest time. And what's going to happen? So they've been trying to negotiate agreements with the Obama Center that have not been successful. And so when you look around the country, you see this trend of moving black folks, man, taking areas that were once ours. So we need to start, we say, paying more attention. You know, don't just listen to the latest hip hop beef. Don't just watch the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Don't don't just focus on who was at Diddy's party and did 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 uh, Kanye West and and Jay Z talk to each other or not. Don't just focus on why did Jay Z take the phone for the guy that looked like he was <laughs> videotaping Beyonce. I mean, if you need some of that, get it a little bit. But beyond that, see what's happening in the wider world because those things are going to impact your life more than these other entertainment hip hop things, you know, that may be distract that may distract you. You know, you, you need to kind of see what's happening in your own world. Yes, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Of course, you know, the story or what we would hear in the community a lot is the attack of the black man. And that reality has not stopped. But what we're noticing is even an increased attack on the black woman as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, we just did an article, cover story a couple weeks ago about sex trafficking. Um, and we have two uh, articles coming up, um, I guess, during this week. You know, the, the weeks start to run together, right? But we got two articles about sex trafficking um, seminars. One was held in Chicago and one was held in Baltimore. So this is a major problem. We're trying to help our people confront it. So, you know, join with the Muslims. Join with whoever is trying to do good, man, because this thing of, of, of these assaults on women and girls are really, really tragic. It's not going to stop until we put a stop to it. And, and that point, I'm glad you said that because that's, that's the thing. And, of course, I have to always come in. And, of course, I'll let you know of my bias. I have a bias towards the Final Call newspaper. But one of the things that I do really enjoy is the fact that we are able to see on a regular basis mm -hmm. in the midst of so much darkness, by law's permission, there is a light yeah. in our community. And that light is the Nation of Islam, but not just the Nation of Islam, but there's other people who are in our community that see a need and are stepping up and taking responsibility. And all of these, all of these, both of these forms, right, one was sponsored at Mosque Mariam, or one was held at Mosque Mariam, the headquarters of Mosque for the Nation of Islam. But we were not the only ones who spoke. We were not the only experts there. So we reach out to those in our community because we want to we wanna serve the totality of black life. So likewise in, in Baltimore, it wasn't just Student Minister Carlos Muhammad, but there were other people from the police department and others that are working on this problem, they had good information. So this is an example of how when we come together, when we come together and show some love and commitment, we can do more together. So let's keep doing that. And of course, in addition to that, of just community involvement is that we had in Pensacola, the mm -hmm. conflict resolution train, the media um, 
announcing it and talking about it doesn't mean that that movement has yeah, stopped. Well, one, the, the movement the movement depends on what we who have heard the message do. And so in Pensacola, Florida, you have Brother Willie Muhammad continue his um, efforts to spread conflict resolution training. So this has been ongoing with Muslims since 2015. You know, we also had, um, <coughs> excuse me, student minister, regional minister Hafiz Muhammad out of the mosque, Muhammad Mosque number seven in New York with a Muslim Christian kind of activity. So anything that binds us together, that brings us together in a positive, real way, as opposed to tearing us apart is a good thing. So we want to continue to build those relationships, do that work, and share resources. So if you know something and I don't, then if we get together, maybe we can move a little faster because I can learn from you and benefit from you. You can learn from me and benefit from me, and we can do something for ourselves. Thank you, Brother Richard. I'm going to just jump um, and just ask you to give me a little bit about what's going in, in international news, what's going on around the world that we need to know about. Of course, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad always wanted us to be aware of the time, yeah. but the importance and value, one of the values of the paper, especially as you reference his article, is that we don't want to just know what's going on historically. We don't want to just know what's going on in society today just, just to know. Is, but it gives us an insight on what we need to be doing right now. So Absolutely. can you give us a little bit about what's going well, on? Well, um, one, you know, we've been, if you follow the final call, you know that we've been following the, um, the plight of the Rohingya Muslims in Myanmar. And this is our brothers and sisters who, when you look, they're actually very dark people with straight hair, you know. And they are being uh, really subjected to genocide, you know. And there's a constant uh, effort to exterminate them. And on the other hand, you have those who are continually trying to bring their story home and trying to get justice for them. So that's a very important story. Interesting also, look, on, on the European side, France is raising the mandatory retirement age. So what does that mean? That should tell you something about the economics. We can't afford to pay for you to retire. So you're going to have to work a little bit longer. So that's, again, a sign of the types of, um, of, the types of, of uh, problems that the white world is having right now. So we need to stay tuned, man, and, and, and stay on top and, and try to have, like I said, a balanced media diet, you know, so that we can better understand what's happening in the world so that we can ultimately make good decisions for ourselves. That's what the information is about and the teachings is about. It is about sharing information with you so you make a good decision for your own life because you have to take charge of your posts, your life, and manage your own reality. Who better to do that than you, but you can be better at it if you have supreme wisdom and good guidance. Thank you, Brother Richard. It's, it's a lot of positivity going on this issue. Um, and so we had in Milwaukee, haircuts for hope in Milwaukee, um, brothers getting their haircuts. And of course, we know the type of dialogue that happens in the barber shop. Can you give us a little bit about? Well, this what is again is what uh, some of the, some of the um, like you say, the, the, the positive activity, providing haircuts for youngsters um, and, and food. This was sponsored by uh, Muhammad Moss number three in, in Milwaukee. So. Um, it was really an opportunity to, again, a way to reach out to young black men in particular and to try to provide a service for them, but also try to make a connection to them so that ultimately if we can talk to them, if we can share information with them, hopefully we can get them to understand their value and the opportunity that truly is theirs under the, um, this dispensation of the direct intervention of Allah and His Christ. So we can show them great opportunity and show them uh, who they are and why they should love themselves, then we are looking at them being able to do good things. So this is our work, and that's Milwaukee. So check it on out in this edition of The Final Call. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Brother Richard. Are there any questions, any comments, anybody? I see we got a little lively audience. We thank you for all of your comments and your feedback. Did someone say there's the, no sound again? Um, is anybody else having, it looks like I, I have sound on my end. Is there anybody else that's having audio problems? 
well, I'm going to assume that there's not. I'm, I'm just scrolling real quickly through the comments. Uh, if there's not any questions, we're going to ask that you like and share, of course, this show and other episodes of the show. Okay, so so our brother Donald Murphy looks like there's a problem on your end. Of course, he can't hear me saying that it must be the problem on his end. But everybody else, it looks like, is able to hear me all, all good. So, anything else that you want to touch on before we close? Well, out? you know, I'll just close with again Final Call 40th Anniversary Dinner in Detroit. Go to NOI.org and get your ticket now. Savior's Day, uh, 2020, in Detroit, February 21st through through the 23rd at the TCF Center in Detroit. Detroit is always a great city when we go, and of course right. it's the city where the nation started. So it's always a great, great homecoming, man. They welcome us, they love us, we love them. So man, do yourself a favor. Come to Savior's Day this year, man, and get recharged and re-inspired and get a look at what happens when black folk know who they are and are controlling things for themselves. It's like the real Wakanda. It's like the real Wakanda. We just need a little bit more money and some uh, vibranium. <laughs> but that's coming. That's coming. That's we got right. all we need. We just, Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that our unity is stronger than an atomic bomb. That's right. So the, our vibranium is us getting on the same vibe, right. pooling our resources, and doing what we need to do for ourselves. All right. Amen. Thank you once again. Thank you, um, sir. Behind the Final Call cover story, I, I saw comments in there that, that said, you know, what help can we use? Man, if you could just help us with your feedback, make sure you are liking the show, that you're sharing the show. We know we're not perfect and we got a little ways to go, but whatever feedback you can give us, we appreciate it. So, Especially on sound. Hey, 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 hey. But if you are in the city of Chicago, in the area, and you'd like to provide some, some little help here, we'd we, we love that, but we, we're definitely open to your feedback, your questions, whatever you got for us. We definitely appreciate it. Until next time. Behind the final call cover story, assalamu alaikum.